Hello, I am the Reverend Aaron Ochart, and welcome to Daily Prayer. I thought I would do a quick sort of introduction video uh, for those unfamiliar with a daily prayer service and kind of take you through and what does that look like and what are we doing and why are we doing it, all that sort of stuff. Um, so daily prayer service is something that is given to us in our liturgy um, from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. It was recently updated in 2018, so I'm using those prayers. And it's just a simple service during the day. Uh, you could do it in the morning. I usually post these in the morning um, or in the evening. It doesn't really matter what time it is. Some of the prayers are a little bit tied to morning or evening, but it, it doesn't really matter when you pray. The purpose is that you spend some time in reflection, in prayer, um, and so that's that's what's given to us. Our, our, of course, our liturgy is sort of rooted back to um, our Book of Common Worship is sort of based on the, uh, the what is it called, the Episcopal Book of Common Worship um, of sort of simple prayers and then back to Catholic liturgy. This was all stuff during the Reformation that was kind of thrown out and then there was a liturgical renewal in the 20th century, I believe, that said, you know, these things are actually fairly important for us to 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 do as well. I like the fact that they're, the prayers are a little bit more, um, they're formed and formal. They, as you will see, they, it goes through several different things that I might not think to pray myself. And over the week, we pray for various different things and um, spend some time in reflection. Um, so every morning there is, I'll go through this, um, there is a, some sort of opening sentences, and these come from Scripture. Sometimes they are responsive. If they are, they will be bolded with people, hallelujah. If you are able to uh, respond, please do. If you are not, if you're watching this while you're driving, by all means, do not try to focus on this and, and see what the... Um, response is. I will say both parts. If you would like to uh, to respond, then please do. Most of the time we will have a thanksgiving for baptism. This is actually a newer thing. This is something that came in this 2018 uh, revision of the Book of Common Worship. It's very much based on the um, the great prayer of thanksgiving, which uh, the, the sort of reformed tradition and, and um, and mainline denominations kind of use for the Lord's Supper. Um, this, the Lord be with you and also with you, that may be familiar to you. Um, but this is specifically thanking God for our baptism. We are people of baptism. We are transformed. We are made into the image of Christ to a certain extent. We are adopted as children. We are united in Christ's death and also in Christ's resurrection through baptism. And is, so it's important to remember. And so it is this sort of, again, formed prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. That's going to be the same every day. And then there is a short form prayer, thanking God for the gift of baptism. We then gather together in... Um, and scripture reading, and that is from the daily lectionary reading of the Reformed Common Lectionary. For every day, there are two psalms for the morning. There's actually four psalms, two for the morning, two for the evening. There is an Old Testament lesson, there is a epistle lesson, and there is a gospel lesson. For the most part, these will go sort of sequentially through. So, for instance, right now we're in the season, uh, or we're in the season of Easter, and we are starting in Exodus, kind of with the Passover, because it is also the Jewish festival of Passover, and so we kind of work our way, um, you know, it's chapter one, verse twelve, or to verse twelve, or whatever, one day, and then the next day it'll start up and verse 13. Sometimes it skips over. Sometimes there are optional readings, that sort of thing, but 
for the most part, it kind of moves its way on through various things. Um, it is a four-year cycle, of, or no, I'm sorry, it is a two-year cycle for the daily lectionary. And so those all kind of move through. The first psalm is is one that it kind of moves around and does different things. The second psalm is always, um, there, there are seven settings from the last five psalms, which are all psalms of praise. And so there's always going to be a psalm of praise. And the first one will be, sometimes it'll be a psalm of lament. It, sometimes it will be a psalm of praise. Sometimes it will be a psalm of victory or something like that. So that sort of switches up every day. Um, Old Testament, like I said, moves on through. The epistle moves through one of those epistles or letters or whatever from the New Testament and kind of moves its way on through. So you kind of get the idea of the argument of Paul or, or whatever it is. And I will try to sort of sum up what all of those things are. And then the gospel lesson focuses on one gospel most of the time and kind of moves its way along. Again, uh, for seasonal reasons, it may focus on like the birth of Jesus during Advent Christmas. It will focus on the passion and uh, resurrection for Lent and Easter. And so it's sort of tied to those liturgical times as well. I spent a little bit of time talking about these. Now, I frankly, I don't do a whole lot of pre-thought about this sort of stuff. It's It's um, very much off the cuff what comes to mind as I'm thinking these through, connecting it to what we're going through right now. Um, just to kind of get you thinking about how do we apply scripture to our lives? How does this connect with other things? We also have spent a little bit of time in a devotion. Um, and so right now we're doing the Counting the Omar and check out um the daily prayer for April 13th, and that'll kind of explain what counting the Omar is. But it's just another devotion um, to kind of help us to focus and to have a different voice other than just my own, um, someone else calling us to attention to scripture. We then spend some time in prayer, and you will see that these prayers, there's sort of an opening that is, um, the, the opening is usually satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise from Psalm 90. Um, and then sort of an opening sentence. And then you see the especially we thank you for. And then each, each day there are things that we pray for, that, that we thank God for, and I will spend usually about 10 seconds thinking about, you know, whatever it is, ministries of discernment and governance. And we can all pray together for that particular thing. After the end of those things that we thank God for, there is a time for people of God for what else do we give thanks. And we reflect on those things that personally we give thanks for. I don't usually put any, I don't speak during that time to give you and I uh, time to to lift those things up to God in prayer. Then there is a little bit of a form prayer as well, and then there are things that we pray for, um, and it's an interesting sort of connection of or uh, sequence of praying for the church in various parts of the world um, for sort of ecological issues. Um, and oftentimes people who we don't think about. So those who are lonely and forgotten, um, those from whom we are strange. Um, these are, again, issues and things that maybe we don't always think about, but we spend some time thinking about them in prayer. And again, people of God, for what else do we pray? Just some time for you to, to lift up those things. We then close in a um, another sort of form prayer, and this is usually tied to the, the season in which we are. And so right now it's Easter themed. During Lent, it's more Lent kind of themed. During Advent, it's more Advent-y kind of themed. During ordinary time, it's, it's um, just kind of focusing on our life of discipleship. And then we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Um, the words are always up there. And even if you are driving, you can join along with me. Um, and then we close in prayer uh, in a dismissal. This may be responsive. It may not. And, um, of course, you can join me in that as well. So that's kind of what the prayer service looks like. Um, 
if I'm doing my job or it's a terrible way to say that, um, if I'm working ahead of time, that's better. Um, I will post these at eight o'clock and they'll come out on our YouTube channel and you can watch them either right then when they come out or you can watch it at various times in the day. Just participate with us. There's something really amazing and wonderful about joining together in worship and in prayer, even if we're not physically in the same place. But you are connected with all the other people who are um, praying together these same prayers. Not only people who are watching this particular video and who may have watched it before you or may have wa will watch it after you, we're also united with all those who are united in this same prayer. And we are praying together for the church in various parts of the world. We are praying for those people who we are uh, who we have forgotten, those who are sick for ministers, for all sorts of different things as we work our way through these daily prayer services. So that's kind of the idea of that. It's just a time that we can all spend together, um, even though we might be separate, praying for God's people, for God's work in the world, hearing scripture together, um, seeking and understanding what God is calling us to be and to do. So that is the daily prayer service. I hope that you will find it useful, that you will pray along with us, and that you will seek God's face every day through scripture and through prayer. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will always ask for you to like videos, share them, um, and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and click the notification button. And all of those things are very helpful, not only for you to find these things again, but for other people to find these things. These prayer services have been viewed by people all over the world. And that's, that's kind of an amazing, wonderful sort of thing. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, definitely join for daily prayer together as we join and seek God's face every day. Thank you so much.